you're just joining us, I want to bring you the very latest on what we know is happening so far. Uh, confirmation that strikes, US military strikes, have begun against uh, targets in Iraq and Syria. Uh, confirmation coming to us from the Pentagon. We have a statement from the Pentagon saying that uh, it has conducted airstrikes in Iraq and Syria against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards. Uh, they say uh, they're also targeting affiliated militia groups. Uh, they say the US military has now struck 85 targets. They say numerous aircraft, uh, including long-range bombers, uh, had flown from the United States. Uh, they say they employed more than 125 precision munitions. Uh, the facilities they say that were struck included command and control operations, centers, intelligence centers, rockets and missiles, and unmanned air uh, vehicle storages, they say, uh, but also some of the facilities regarding logistics and munition supply. Uh, they say they, uh, those are the facilities that have been struck in these first strikes. So uh, the Pentagon confirming more than 85 targets with numerous aircraft flown there taking part in those strikes. Um, so confirmation coming to us as you can see on the screen that uh, those airstrikes have begun. Uh, a reminder of course in uh, retaliation um, for the further strikes against US interests we've been reporting of course today just the repatriation ceremony of the bodies of three US servicemen who were killed on Sunday. Uh, at a US Air Force base. Uh, we also know too uh, that Iran has denied any involvement in this. Uh, they say it is not their responsibility, President Biden opting not to strike directly uh, within, inside Iran or on Iranian soil, but choosing instead these targets around the region in both Syria and Iraq. Uh, let's get the thoughts now of Esther Bremer, who is former US Assistant Secretary of State for International Organization Affairs. And Esther, we're grateful that you're with us on the program tonight. We've been discussing a little earlier about what these strikes may look like. We are now starting to get details. Uh, the Pentagon saying they have hit 85 targets. Indeed, what President Biden had said that he would retaliate for this action at a time of his own choosing and possibly at multiple sites. Of course, we are just hearing what the information is, so we cannot go too far, but we do understand that there are multiple sites, which is consistent with the strong statement the president has said he wanted to send. Um, and given your experience and how um, these things may play out in the early days, it's, it's clear that we don't have all the details about what exactly has gone on. And uh, we're just reporting the details we're getting from the Pentagon, but saying 85 targets. We were discussing earlier what those targets may be. We're starting to get details, uh, including things like command and control operation centers, intelligence centers, rockets, missiles, unmanned vehicles. Uh, those are the things that we got a sense would be targeted to prevent those militia being able to strike back at uh, US interests and US forces, one assumes, given that they have flown there uh, in long range bombers from the United States. Indeed, as you indicate that he would, that the intent would be both to retaliate for the previous actions, but also to make it less possible for further action uh, by those forces. I think it's also important to note that there were those who called for a direct attack on Iran. The administration clearly thought it much wiser uh, in the long run to actually act on other other sites. And I think it is both calibrated about the choice of location. But of course, we are just getting the news in and we'll have a better sense when we have more information. But again, it's noted uh, where and the number of sites being consistent with what the administration said would be part of their response. And our correspondent, Esther, who was in uh, northern Iraq, telling us that this is a really fine balancing act, isn't it? It's about sending that message of deterrence, sending that message about not messing with the United States and not striking its interests. But at the same time, we'll have a very keen eye on not wanting to escalate what is already a very fragile uh, security situation in that region. Indeed, it, it, anytime one uses military force, there are multiple factors to consider. But indeed, one had to balance both the strategic choices and the, their diplomatic impl implications. 